Hello Summoners and welcome back to another episode of Pro Guide's Best Champion of Main, now on patch 12.1. The champions that we pick for these series are strong picks with high performance, but have low low ban rates and are unlikely to get nerfed anytime soon. They are reliable picks for climbing and are worth investing your time in. We also have a series that covers the most broken contested picks in each role, so be sure you're subbed to the channel and you don't miss out when we post those as well. We'll be starting things out in the top lane with Quinn. Rain champions are naturally pretty big lane bullies in the top lane and Quinn is arguably the best bully of them all. Like any other ranged champion, you can use her to constantly pressure your opponent, punishing them for every single minion that they try to hit. Now we don't condone bullying unless it's in the top lane, because I mean, hey, if you like the top lane, you're probably a masochist. But what she does have over the other ranged top laners is her ability to disengage any attempt that an opponent tries to make at you, thanks to her Q and her E. So that said, you don't want to just waste and spam those two abilities for extra harass. You'll be already doing plenty of damage to your opponent if you attack them when Valor marks them. Just treat Q and E as defensive cooldowns that you'll use anytime your opponent tries to get in on you. If you're tired of being stuck in your current elo, the first step to climbing is fixing your champion pool. And that's why we make these videos so you can find the right champion or champs for you. After you decide on what you're going to play, you then have to learn how to play it correctly. It can take many, many games to learn a new champion, but you don't have to spend days and weeks doing it alone. Our top tier coaches over at ProGuys.com can help you figure out exactly what you need to work on. They're available 24-7, so it's never really a bad time to come try one out. I promise there's at least one that specializes in exactly what you're looking for. These guys have spent years reaching the top of the ladder, so why wouldn't you want to steal all their solo queue tips and tricks? All you have to do is click the link in the description. Now let's get back to the video. The second top laner that we have for you is Urgot. This beefy boy is the perfect pick if you want a ramping pick that scales hard into the mid and late game. When I hear Juggernaut, I generally think of a champion that is more tanky than hard carry, but Urgot shatters that definition. He's pretty much a super durable hyper carry. If you have 3 items on Urgot and you can manage to get onto an opponent, they're toast. The build that we have listed here is the go-to cookie cutter build option, but personally, I like to build a little bit more offensively. I tend to go Death's Dance and Kemp Puck Chainsword in the last 2 slots. And just a tip, don't try too hard to group up all the time as Urgot. He has insane damage, but if your team doesn't really have a super strong engage, or somebody like Zillion or Lulu to enable you, you can be very easily kited to death. Instead, just plant yourself in a side lane and force your opponents to walk into your effective range. The last top laner that we have for you this patch is Garen. Garen is basically the perfect intro champion for League of Legends. He's easy to understand and there aren't many champions with easier mechanics, but just because he's noob friendly, that doesn't mean that he's only good for noobs. Garen is an incredibly strong pick, even at the highest elos. I've seen a diamond level player one trick Garen up at the high end level of challenger. His simplicity is exactly what makes this possible. Garen naturally beats out just about every other melee champion in the game at all stages of the game. Since he's so easy to play, you don't really have to worry about throwing a winning lane with a mechanical mistake. You just spin to win and then press R once your opponent is low enough. He's essentially just the Chad of League of Legends. All you really have to do is focus on wave management and macro later into the game. If you can handle that, you'll be climbing no problem at all. Taking a look now at the jungle, we'll be starting off with Amumu. The jungle meta has slowed down a bit compared to Season 11. And don't get me wrong, there are still plenty of high tempo early game junglers like Rek'Sai and Shen Zhao near the top of the tier list, but they don't totally define the meta, so here's some wiggle room for champions that take a little bit longer to come online. Aside from early game champions as a whole being nerfed towards the end of the season, there was also the addition of objective bounties this year. This makes scaling picks safer to pick, since you're basically guaranteed a windfall later into the game as long as your opponents don't completely shut you out and you can find at least one good fight. And Amumu is perfect for that. You just need to find that one good engage that gives you an ultimate on the entire enemy team to take back the game. If your teammates are asking why you're not ganking, just tell them that you're a little bit wrapped up in something. Because <laughs> he's a mummy. Anyway, another tank jungler doing super well right now is Zac. Like Amumu, Zac takes a little bit to get going. His ease range at rank 1 is pretty pitiful, and doesn't allow you to do very much on your first clear through the jungle. But once you get some more points into it, Zac becomes one of the hardest junglers to deal with in the game. Zac with his E max is like dealing with Rek'Sai but with twice the range and much more CC. If you like to jump into conclusions and team fights, well then Zac is definitely the pick for you. If any of the opposing laners are immobile, they're an easy mark and you should be spam ganking them over and over and over again. Then later on into the game you'll be using his massive engage range to jump into the enemy backline and cause mayhem. Just remember, Zac isn't unstoppable during his slingshot, so if you're jumping in head on to the enemy team, there's probably somebody on their team that can stop you in your tracks. Always try to come flying over a wall. The third jungler that we have for you today is Kindred. Kindred's stats are always a little bit deceptive. 
Her win rate usually hovers between 50 and 51% and plat ELO and higher, which seems just barely above average. But that couldn't be further from the case. Kindred has a high skill floor. You can't just be good at getting yourself fed. You also have to be good at getting your marks, and Kindred marks totally enable her. Not only do they enhance her abilities, but they also give her more range. The first four in particular are super crucial, giving a huge 75 range increase, with every three marks after that giving another 25. Reaching 7 stacks in the mid game and 10 for the late game teamfights are pretty much mandatory for navigating teamfights safely. Otherwise, you have to queue in, potentially putting yourself in harm's way. Now for the mid lane, the first champion that we'll be looking at is Fizz. Out of all the assassins in the game, Fizz is doing the best right now. He may not be as popular as Zed or Kiana, but when he does get picked, he's generally a lot more useful. The thing is, while Zed and Kiana have their flashy, fancy combos, they're also a lot easier for opponents to find counterplay against. They pretty much have to land their full combos to kill somebody, so Zhonya's can totally shut them down. But there isn't nearly as much counterplay against Fizz. You don't have to be particularly fed on him. Once you have Rabidons and Lichbane and a squishy enemy on your same screen, then you have a potential kill with a crazy combo of WQ and Ignite. For me, a champion like Fizz is way more frustrating than Camille. Camille may be broken, but at the same time, she's at least pretty hard to play. Fizz can literally one-shot you with his Q and W alone, with absolutely nothing that you can do about it if you're squishy ADC or support. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What's the most frustrating champ to play against due to lack of counterplay? Let us know your answers in the comments down below, and let's get back on topic, shall we? The second mid laner that we have for you is Rumble. He's been one of the best sleeper mids in the game for way too long now. He just does too well against opponents of all types, and if you're against a melee champion, they're completely unable to move up for CS without you forcing an oppressive trade against them. Range champions don't fare much better. If you can land an E on them, you can run them down and dish out a good amount of damage. If they're playing respectfully, just sitting outside of your range, you can instead just shove in the wave and go for a roam. Post 6, these roams are especially potent if the other opposing laners are immobile champions. You gank once to force their flash, and then come back next time when your ultimate is up to get a free guaranteed kill or two. The last mid laner that we have for you is Malzahar. Oftentimes the mentality of solo lane players is being the main carry on the team. That's why you see so many people main some edgy champions like Yasuo, Yone, or Riven. And <laughs> I'm definitely uh, guilty of this one. Those champs may have some really high 1v9 potential, but 99% of players have very polarizing games in their match history. They either go 15-2 and two or 2-15 two and 15 every single game, and the result is them climbing nowhere fast. Instead of being a coin flip player like that, Malice gives you a champion that brings in very consistent results. He may not be super flashy or have insane 1v9 potential, but he puts a lot of damage over time in teamfights. Plus, his ultimate is one of the best teamfighting tools that you'll find on any mid laner. In my opinion, he's just very boring to play, so that's probably just the price that you have to pay. The 2.5 suppression is a great way to stop divers that would otherwise have their way with you and other carries on the team. Moving things down to the bot lane, the very first carry that we have for you is Zaya. The Lethality build that we talked about a couple patches ago has caught on as Zaya's most popular build, but with Eclipse being nerfed this patch, we think it's time to go back to Gale Force as your option. Eclipse will still be viable against super squishy teams, but the DPS from the crit builds outweighs it in most games. Instead of the standard lethal tempo page, we have Halo Blades as the keystone of choice. It synergizes perfectly with your E, allowing you to get 3 feathers down and land a root. That being said, if you aren't playing a stop lane, lethal tempo is a better page for scaling, so take that instead. The second ADC that we have for you is Kog'Ma. Kog may not be as popular as Jinx or Vayne, but that's exactly what makes him a great champion to main. He's rarely contested, so you'll be able to get him in most of your games. Plus, he has some things going on for him that those two don't. Since his damage output is so insane, you can build a couple of defensive items on him and still absolutely shred through any opponents that come in range. This is why we have items like Wit's End and Randuin's in your build. Those are the typical go-tos, but feel free to swap to any other options that you want. You can even build Shield Bow on him if you need more survivability, but since it was nerfed this patch, it shouldn't be your go-to mythic. The third bot lane carry that we have for you is Karthus. Karthus has consistently been one of the highest win rate champions in the bot lane for what feels like years now, but for some reason no one really notices. He flares up now and again and when Riot gives him some incredibly minor buff and everybody forgets about him. But there's no reason to, he's still super strong, with no such thing as a losing matchup, aside from a massive support gap. He can shove in any opponents, and if a fight is forced against you then you should always be able to trade back a kill or two. The scaling is absolutely insane as well, and if you make it past 3 items, you'll do insane damage in every fight, even if you instantly die at the start, thanks to his passive. Just be sure to press R before the casting window closes, and I believe that you could get 3 Qs in before you could press R. Little tip there. Now for our supports, the very first champion that we'll be talking about is Sona. She saw a pretty big spike in both her win rate and play rate after her menu revamp last season, but she sort of fell off to the side. 
Most players seem to prefer champions with a little bit more presence in the early game, like Nami and Lulu. I can see why, but the one argument that I make against that mindset is that sometimes it doesn't matter how much pressure you apply early game. If the enemy jungler camps and makes a lane a 2v3, you can't win anyway. So why not just go for a pick that guarantees scaling? Sona is hands down the best enchanter when it comes to late game teamfights, with all her damage, amping, heals, shields, and movement speed aura enabling the rest of the team. Another great scaling option is Rakan, but instead of being a backlaner enchanter, he's all about engaging and setting up your team in teamfights with his flashy engages. So if you're tired of losing games because your team never really seems to pick engage, and when they do, they have no idea how to start a fight, he may be the one for you. You can change up your build a lot with Rakan. The one that we gave you is your typical utility build, but you can build for more offense or defense if needed, with options like Even Shroud, Solari, Zeeks, and Stoneplate all being good options. Finishing off our list, we have Tarek. He's another one of those champions that you don't want to judge him based off his overall win rate. He may hover around the 50% line, but that's because Tarek is pretty hard to play. But when you're good at him, he's an incredibly versatile pick. You can play him as a kill lane support with the mobile aggressive ADC. My personal favorite combo is Trisana and Tarek, since she can just jump right in with her W slow allowing you to easily land your stun. If you have a less aggressive ADC, you can just switch gears to be more passive, playing a disengage if your opponents try to go in. Regardless of how you end up playing, the one bit of advice I have for you is to not stop auto attacking. Tarek's entire kit revolves around constantly spamming his Q to proc his passive, and then auto attacking twice to instantly reset its cooldown. This allows you to heal a ton and constantly cycle in your W and your E. If you stop autoing and you lose your resets, you just become a walking rock basically. So if you can't reach a champion, don't be afraid to just stop and hit a minion, a turret, or whatever is nearby in the middle of a fight. And that's it for our top 3 champions to main on 12.1. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure you sub so you never miss out on our meta guides, and you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know what Zero Counterplay Champion is the most frustrating to play against down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box, where you can go ahead and discuss the league further, or just hang out and be part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.